Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Ridge Community Church Podcast. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors on staff at the Ridge, and our vision is to bring the hope of Jesus into every home. So as a piece of that, our goal each week is to bring you something that's hopeful and helpful. So subscribe to this podcast to make sure you don't miss any hopeful and helpful conversations. Hey, everyone, and thanks for listening to this episode of the Ridge Community Church Podcast. If you find today's episode hopeful and helpful, then please follow or subscribe and then rate and review so that more people can find the conversation. In today's episode, I want to share a conversation that I had with the lead pastor at the Ridge, Mark White. See, Mark just got off his yearly vacation and we wanted to catch up and and just catch what he's been reflecting on as he has had a chance to, to slow down and recharge. So Mark starts off by sharing what it was like to drop off his oldest kids at college for the very first time. So we have a little discussion about parenting and what he would do differently and what he would keep the same. And then we chat about how taking some time to reflect is so important and what those reflections have really put in the front of Mark's mind during this next season. This is my conversation with Mark. Well, hey, Mark, thanks for coming on the podcast. Hey, you must have uh, run out of ro- uh, run out of guest names because you're back to me again. We did. We completely ran out of guests. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, hey, so I know you just got back from vacation. So uh, let's start off in a little fun way. What was the most fun part of of your vacation? Well, I uh, I have this routine I do every year. Okay, and uh, so I get now four weeks vacation time. I've been with the, you know the rich since the beginning, fifteen years. So they give me four weeks. I'm trying to get five, but the board won't. They won't approve me for five. <laughs> And so what I've done over the past, I don't know, five years or so is I've just saved all my vacation time and used it all at once. Mm. And so that's why I take, you know, four weeks off in a row. And uh, it's it's just been great to just recover and rest and all that stuff. But uh, and obviously, you know, with having kids and things like that. So we, we planned some specific things. So we did a couple of fun things. One went to Florida, which I know people go to Florida in like January, February, March. We go to Florida, in, you know, July. But we've done you it. Just, you just like the humidity. I get it, right? <laughs> yeah. I love the humidity. And we had such a great time. We went to Indian Shores and we had a condo on the beach. And we just we just had this routine that we did every day for seven days. It was kind of funny. So um, we would get up and we'd be up before the kids would. And then I'd go for a run and, you know, just the massive humidity. Uh, barely make it. Drag myself up five flights of stairs. And then the, the boys would finally get up. And then Ellie would get up at about. 10 we'd eat breakfast and then we go lay on the beach for about two and a half hours and then when we were done we'd have lunch and then we would go for a ride somewhere and just pick a spot hang out and then we'd come home have dinner and then we would finish up that we play uh, a couple games and then we'd finish up the day by watching a, a show on netflix that uh, we we last couple of years we picked a series and then we would watch it and we'd get done about 10 30 and we'd just start the routine over again it was the same thing every day and it was so much thinking fun <laughs> i appreciate the consistency in that I'm, I'm curious if you tried any uh any seafood this year uh i did not after my experience <laughs> in couples, i've stayed away from seafood <laughs> Again, I'm on a seafood fast. Okay, good. That's a lifelong, I'm guessing. Yeah, Hopefully lifelong. <laughs> Hopefully lifelong. That's awesome. Uh, okay, so speaking of speaking of the kids, you just dropped off the boys at college. Mm-hmm. What, what was that like? Yeah, it, it is. You know, Don and I were trying to prepare for that because we're close with the boys, and. You know, obviously we were so proud that they were, you know, where they're going and they got to this point and some of the scholarship stuff that they've earned and the opportunities and all that stuff. Okay. So we're so proud, but at the same time, there's a, there's an ending of a season and you know, it's coming. Okay. And so, um, they ended up working it out where they weren't necessarily planning on going to the same school. It worked out that way. And it ended up working out where they, they, uh, their roommates and there was supposed to be a third roommate there, but that person, uh, decided to room with someone else. So it ended up being just the two of them in the same room. And so Don and I have to take two cars and, and, you know, you move into dorms and, and um, they had a whole day scheduled for us and all that stuff. But then at the night they have what's called ascending. So you're in this gymnasium and the band is playing and the, the pep band is playing. And it's like this, you know, real lively environment and all that stuff. Well, then uh, we're, they're going to Concordia and they have this time where you actually then send your kids. Okay. Okay. And then everybody, you can tell Don and I, and the whole play, every parent's like, I don't want this moment to come. I don't want this moment to come because here it is right here. (laughs) And so they, they wrote out this prayer Concordia did for us to pray over our kids. 
And wow. uh, they're like, okay, we want you to pray. And, this, and it was just a cool prayer. I mean, it really was. I couldn't make it through it. I'm just reading this. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't. I could tell. I didn't look at Don. I knew she wasn't <laughs> going to make it through it. All right. So we get to the end and then uh, we, we we walk out and uh, we just kind of looked at each other. I think everybody just bawled and uh, just hugged. We just, it was, and then you just release them, you know, and you raise them to release them. Okay. And so you're excited about it. Man, it's tough to release them. It really is really tough to release them. So they've been gone for four or five days now and we've been nonstop texting. Uh, they've been texting with us. And so it's just, I mean, we're just proud of them, but man, I just, it just feels like a hole it really does. It just feels like a hole. Just miss them to death. Was the school set up like process? Do you think that was a helpful thing or did like, cause I'm not, not every school does that. I know when I got dropped off at, at college, it was like, like, see ya, you know? <laughs> yeah. I like that. I did. I yeah. I liked it because I I like the commissioning idea, yeah. And commissioning into to a uh, another season, an important season of their journey. So I liked that idea. I really did. It just you just knew it was coming, and it's just emotional reading the words and just like man, this is it. That and they captured how you felt really well, hmm. really did. But just you know, entrusting them to God, and I mean that's what we do. So it just was very real. Yeah, I wonder if parents that like at state schools or, you know, you have the benefit of Concordia. I mean, you got to pray with them, right? I wonder if mm -hmm. that's uh, like a send off for those that are going to maybe a state school or, in, or a different type of private college, having that moment of prayer with them could be really powerful. I do. I think the commissioning idea for them and for the parent is really important. There, there's got to be something Thing significant that marks the moment that is is about to happen. Okay, mm -hmm. that you are really sending your kids, and that's what a commissioning is. You're you're uh, in the New Testament. They'd always lay hands on them and then commission them for what was next, whatever that calling was. You know, plant a church or to, you know uh, to to do something else. So there is something very significant about that that I think God really works through. Mm -hmm. uh, it's identifying, hey, God, not only do we invite you in this, but we really are praying that you would just continue to lead and direct their steps as they move into this next journey. And everybody recognizes that. And I think it's just really important. So I think as parents, anything that you can do to uh, to do that with your kids, whether it be bef the day before they go there, if it's a public school, and you don't have time to do it, uh, or while you're there and you incorporate that into that, at, that day, I think it's just really important to do. It really is. Yeah, I mean... You can even even expand it. it. Wouldn't even necessarily have to be a kid going to college. You know, say your kid's moving out. You know, they didn't go to the the college route and they're just they're right. moving out on their own. That's its own it's sending, moving, right? I think, I think, yeah, I think that's well said. I, yeah, we just said college because you know that's what we just came oh, up. Oh, totally. With. But yeah, I think John, that's that's rec that 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 season where they're done being home. Mm. And uh, for whatever that next step is, and that you are recognizing that with them and. And being able to send them in an appropriate way, I think, is really important. So, what about the parents that you know they got they got kiddos at home, whatever age, right? Is there, I don't know, it, it, is there advice that you should have gotten, or maybe some advice that you were told that you're like, no, that's really good. I think I listened to that, <laughs> or you wish you would listen to more. Yeah, I think. Well, obviously, you when you when you send them like that, you do a lot of you do a lot of reflecting back. Mm. I had a friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, who had just sent his his first to college. And I, I sent him a text and I said, how was it? And this was a fascinating response. He said, thrilling, sad, regretful, um, exciting. And he had all these, these words to describe it that were a mix. Mm -hmm. And so I called him and I, I said... Hey, tell me about that. And he just said, man, once it happens, you just start to reflect on, on the good and then the mistakes that you made. Okay. And you wish you could do back, which is normal. All right. And, and I think it's important. So some of the things that I reflected on that I think that, that we did well, good advice and wisdom that we were given was uh, we, we connected with families that were raising kids that love God and uh, were, were obviously, we felt like taking good steps, just uh, emotional maturity, relational maturity, just all that stuff. Okay. And so we just stayed very humble that we don't know how to parent because we never have done it before. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to seek the wisdom of those who, who have, I think that's one thing that we just, we've just never been afraid to admit. I see a lot of parents are just afraid to do that, but I always tell parents, they don't come with directions. Okay. And since I've never <laughs> been a parent before, I don't yeah. want to work on my kids. All right. 
that's the last thing. So we, you know, we did that and we we will continue to do that. Even I've, I've talked to some parents about in this next season that have done this and I've already, you know, sought advice on how to best, best parent my kids. Another thing that we did that I think was a game changer for us is we had a goal for parenting. So Donna and I created a goal and it was to create an environment as parents for our kids to follow Jesus, to make that decision on their own. And then the second part was, and then to equip them to live on their own. And so that was our two-part goal as parents with, with our kids. And so what that did was, is obviously, you know, the, it, it made us prioritize things like, hey, we want to we want to make sure they have that environment where they understand that that ultimately the best thing you can do for you is to follow Jesus. And we're going to force that on them. We're going to create the environment, though, for them to make those decisions and to put them not just in church on Sunday, but in other environments for them to do that. The equipping side of that is, hey, um, we want to make sure that when they get to this place that we're not cramming it all in there's two weeks before they're leaving for college. And then we got to teach them about life and <laughs> living on their own. Yeah. So what we did is we had our kids, for example, we said, okay, yeah, in kindergarten, you're, you're, you're going to make your own lunch. They're like, what? Yep. You're going to make your own lunch. They were doing laundry. Uh, Caleb was like cooking out on the grill. I mean, all, I mean, we had them doing all this stuff way back because it was this idea of we're going to equip them. That's part of the goal to live on their own. And uh, it was just kind of fun to watch. But those good yeah. at having that goal is huge. What would we do different? Um, I think I would be home more. And I think mm-hmm. that's one right there. I'd be home more. Uh, I would have I would have taken them on a mission trip. That's one thing I really regret. I said yeah. I was going to do that. I never got around to it. COVID yeah. kind of damp- dampened that a bit. All right. Yeah. But. Now we're, we moved back to their college year. Don and I said we're going to take them in their junior year. I would have taken the boys on a mission trip mm-hmm. and uh, just done that with them, experienced that with them so they can see outside that that this country is not the world, all mm-hmm. right, that the world is bigger than that. Uh, so I would have done that with them. And uh, I, I just would have taken them to more events that I was a part of and had them be a part of that more. I think that would have been really important. Are there any events in particular that kind of stick out to you that you wish you'd have taken them to? Yeah, I uh, I I went to some. I, I mean, I've had some opportunities to go to just some 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 men's stuff, uh, some yeah. um, some parenting seminars. What I do and all that stuff. And uh, you're like, well, do they want to be at a parenting seminar? Well, it wasn't just I mean, but it was just uh, they would learn about what does why do why do we parent the way we do. And what is the goal and see behind the scenes with some of the stuff and then just have those conversations with them. Okay. I mean, we've always had very open relationships. So things like that, some of those conferences, I would have taken more speaking engagements that I got a chance to be a part of. And so they could sit, th- they could sit through and experience some of those. We did that some at the end. I was taking them to a bunch of different churches at the end, just so they could experience some of our network churches and all that stuff. We should have done that earlier on. And um, we encouraged them to serve. I wish I would have started that earlier as well. I mean, they all did. But I wish I would have started that earlier. Yeah. I'm I'm curious. You mentioned you had goals for them. Was that something that you kind of communicated to them? Were they like aware that you had those goals for them? Or that was was that kind of a behind the scenes, we're gonna pick and choose certain things that are gonna help us achieve these things? That, that was a that's a great question. That was what Don and I, we never told them the goal until mm-hmm. before they left. And mm-hmm. it was the last summer that we told them the goal. Yeah. Because they would they would ask questions about stuff and you know, we would begin to well, as they get older, then they could understand, hey, here's why we do, I would explain to them, here's why we do some of the things that maybe other parents don't do. And you know, you might find it to be some somewhat restrictive, but it's not meant to be restrictive. And then we would talk through some of that and and the whys behind it, and we'd share the goal with them then this summer. And it just led to good discussion. Uh, but that was an internal, that was a down on me thing, which here's the thing that unified our parenting. One of the ways it did. So, because that became a filter for us on things. Hey, does that fit the goal? Does that fit the goal? Was that, you know, so that's just, it's really important. Goals guide and goals provide focus. And that's what it did as as parents. Yeah. I wonder if that would be an encouraging step for maybe some parents that are kind of wrestling with, because, you know, I think you go in with it, maybe you have a different mindset of how to parent or you have a different, and that's that goes into communication and expectations and things like that. But, but setting up, what is the number one thing or number two or number three things that we really want our kids to, to experience and to walk away with? Because you're right, that does make you reevaluate and re-ask the questions like, 
well, maybe they don't need to do this. Maybe they should do this instead. Yeah. At parenting is such a challenging job. And you never feel like you're doing it fully right. You always feel like you're doing it wrong. And you're falling <laughs> it and you do every single day. I the thing I love, I go back to this, okay. And I and like I said, I I tell every every couple that's getting ready to have a kid, their first kid, I tell them this. And this is a a principle that goes beyond just the baby stage and the early stage. If you have a teenager right now, I would suggest doing this. Okay. If you have a middle school or any, any age college student, and I'm just going to go back to this, be humble enough to admit you have never been a parent and you have never parented in this place that you are right now. So look for people that, that have, and have done it really well and that you respect and take the time to ask them questions. And here's always the beautiful thing. The people that you ask, they're like, oh, no, no, we're not doing, most of them will be like, oh, no, no, we're, we're, we're a mess. We're not doing it right. Cause no one <laughs> thinks they're doing it right. Okay. And they will be so honored when you do. And I'm telling you that saved us so much. It mm -hmm. really did. That saved, cause here's the thing that we would just react to either how we were parented or how we weren't parented. And then we would not be on the same page. And then it would have been just, you know, it would have been pretty stressful. This saves so much. It really does. And it'll garner so much discussion and then it'll unify you. And it's just once again, and here's the thing, it'll, it'll save your kids. It'll sit because once again, they don't become a test run. They actually become something that you have learned beforehand and you're, you're utilizing principles that you've learned and there's reasons behind why you're doing them. Yeah. That, that takes a tremendous position of, or I guess, posture of humility to do that. It is. That's why most parents don't do it. Mm. It really does. I just finally said this way. Every kid has daddy issues. This is from me. Okay. If you notice when kids <laughs> go to camping, it's always daddy issues. Okay. Very rarely they're mama issues. Okay. And I think there's probably lots of reasons for that, but there's daddy issues. And I finally said, I want to minimize the amount of counseling that my kids have to go through. That's what I finally said, because oh, they have daddy issues because I was learning on them. Mm. And that's just why I did it. Well, well, thank you for sharing those things. That's, I mean, that's when we're here, like taking furious mental notes, being like, okay, I got to check mark these boxes and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, hey, anyway, um, why don't we move uh, aside from the parenting things? Mm -hmm. um, curious if I could ask a little bit more about that vacation time, because I know that uh, some people have lengthy vacations, some people don't, but. Um, I'm curious, what, what percentage of that time do you spend is like you're recharging, you know, like mm -hmm. just like that reboot recharge versus you're preparing your, like the next season, the next year, yeah. whatever that looks like. It's really changed over the years, John, and how I've approached it just because the kids have gotten older. Okay. When they were younger, I wouldn't spend, I would spend 0% honestly and be fully engaged at home Yeah, because couple of reasons. One, I wanted to set the example for the staff that when they're on vacation, I want you to be on vacation. Mm. Okay. I, I don't want you to be here. I, I want, I want healthy, I want people to have healthy rhythms of rest and recharging and then, yeah. you know, working hard and all that stuff. As they've gotten older and just once again, talking to people who are ahead of me in life on this done it, they said, you know, it's okay during your vacation to spend some time, just be, you got to set boundaries, spend some time doing some, some specific work related stuff. So this year was probably 85, 15, 80, 20. Yeah. But the the stuff I spent on work time, John, it wasn't necessarily what you think it it, it might be. I uh, spent some time reading certain books, but then I decided to take some time. I've done this last two years to do what I call some re reflective leadership and reflective hmm. heart work. And what I did was I spent some extended periods. And I think everybody should do this. I'm a terrible ref at, at reflecting, okay? But it's such an important habit to get into. And I've been reading more and more Christian and non-Christian leaders, just the importance of proper reflecting and what to reflect on and all that stuff. Others, we just keep moving. Okay. So I spent some time and I just began to dig into, okay, God, um, where's my heart right now, really? And uh, where am I struggling? Where am I struggling with you? Where am I struggling with life? Uh, where am I struggling with my faith? Why am I struggling with those things? God, search my heart. What do I need to just kind of bring to the surface that's just ugly, that's sinful, that needs to be dealt with, that maybe I didn't know about? And I really spent some time digging into that stuff. And it's hard up front, but I 
man, I tell you, it's just so critical. And it was so good for me. And it took multiple times, uh, sessions, me doing that and all that stuff. And, and that's not a pastor thing. That needs to be a thing thing. Okay. And I tell you, it, it just brought up some stuff. I thought that was just really important for me to go, man, I got to get my arms around that. Hey, I need to repent of that. Hey, I need to look into that a little bit more. God will just shine light on that stuff because he loves us mm -hmm. and he wants to help us grow. And so he wants to expose that stuff because he knows it's holding us back. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, a, it's just a really important thing. So I spent a lot of time with that, honestly. So for those people that maybe aren't natural reflectors, what does that what does that process look like? Are you going in with, hey, here's this, here's this problem that I'm sensing, or is it like I'm looking for a problem, like almost like a I don't know if the I don't know what I don't know type of scenario? Yeah. Well, I'm not a natural reflector. Okay, yeah. so this is something I've had to force myself to do over time. It is, and now I see the benefits of it. So now it's easier, even yeah. though it's not my natural leaning. Yeah. So what what I do, okay, this is this is just me and you can modify this or anyone can modify this in any way they want. But what I do is I just take a journal and uh, I'll write out something like a, a question that I really want to wrestle with. Like, okay, God, I want to, what is, what is my heart like right now? Or what is the condition of my heart like really? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. If we're honest with ourselves going into it, it doesn't take long to get the answer to the question because we already know but I still write it out anyways. Mm. And then after I write out the question, I'll say, God, here's how I'm feeling. And I use the word feeling. And uh, I just will write out certain words that describe the feeling. And um, and then I, after I'm done, I, I always follow up with God, why am I feeling with why am I feeling this way really? So the why question is huge. Mm. So it's bigger than, oh God, I'm feeling this way. And okay, but no, no, no. What got you to this place? Why are you there? Now we're starting to get under the hood a bit of the car yeah. and really seeing what are the issues that are driving that really? Because over time, it just starts to happen. And usually we just kind of move on with life because life's going at, you know, 200 miles an hour. And so we just carry that stuff with us. This is that time to slow down and to really dig under the hood. So the why question is huge. Mm. And then I'll just be silent for a while. And that's hard. But the yeah. more you're on vacation, you see how you kind of start to slow down a little bit. That's why the the timing of it's really important. Yeah. And more often than not, God will in some way reveal that to you. I'll, as a part of that, just to add on to that, I'll read parts of the Bible, the New Testament, mm -hmm. and I'll just reread it. So I'll take like, I, this time I took some some Paul's letters and I just reread them over and over again, that my whole vacation. I never changed. I didn't move on. I just read them. So I probably read them through, and they were short letters, okay, seven or eight times. Wow. And I and all of a sudden by doing that, I had themes that popped out along with the reflecting that I was doing. That's just how God works when you really engage with Him. Yeah, I'm. I'm so I'm really curious. Um, this process. So we've had. I mean, we had. We've had conversations about how whenever you're dealing with something that's maybe more challenging for you to do or challenging for you to talk about, a lot of times you have to like kind of set aside the baggage that you have coming into that situation, whatever it is. You know. Yeah. For me, like example would be like. I've always been like, oh, I don't like to write. I don't like to journal, whatever, whatever. So when I started getting into journaling, I need to be like, okay, I need to, I need to set this aside and be like, whatever, try to, to go through that. Do you think that there are certain things that people we need to like set aside or move through in order to like reflect properly? I do. I, I think you can, I think journaling is critical. Okay. Now you can modify. So something like journaling, journaling, let's say people's like, well, I don't like to write and stuff like that. Well, okay. Um, you don't have to write a book. All right. But you can write out a couple questions. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you yeah. can, I wasn't a writer either. And it just, I started small and started short and then it just began to grow over time because I started to see the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. I started to see how God used it. And I think that's what helps motivate us, but we got to get in there first. Okay. So we got to set aside, well, I don't like to. Okay. That's okay. But it doesn't mean that you still shouldn't. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't like to reflect, but I know I need to. Mm -hmm. And so some people would call those spiritual disciplines. And I, and I think to a degree that they are. And the word disciplines always sounds bad. Okay. Because we hear the word discipline. But I, I heard someone describe it this way. Spiritual disciplines are spiritual warfare. They're the same thing. So they 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 are us engaging in the battle for the, for our heart 
in the and in the battle for us moving forward in our faith in the way Jesus would want us to move forward in our faith because it is a battle. We all know that. That's why the tug of war is not to do these things. It's always in the opposite yeah. direction. So I've just over time seen the benefit of that. And here's what I do: if I don't do those things and work on my inner world, my outer world will continue to crack. Mm. And so I've just finally made a decision to go. I don't like to work on my inner world, but if I don't work on my inner world, my outer world won't get any better. And so you just got to, you got to make the decision to go, what do you really want? And um, if you want that outer world to be everything that God wants it to be, you got to be willing to do those things. You just do. And you can modify it to your personality and stuff like that, but you got to be willing to do those things. Yeah. It's sometimes you got to eat your veggies. You know, <laughs> that's yeah, a little bit of saying, you know, you may not like it, but man, you just gotta, you gotta do it. Well, here's the thing. I hated veggies as a kid, but guess what? I eat a lot of now veggies and I like them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So during, so during all this time of reflection, I'm sure there's stuff that, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's not necessary to share, but curious if there's yeah, anything that I'm curious if there's sure anything that kept the coming back, okay. coming, kept back up. Like, you know, in your mind or your heart as you're kind of going through this process? Mm-hmm. It did. Uh, one of the things that kept coming up to me uh, was, I don't talk to the staff about this because I'll do a staff talk about some of these things I'm learning, is one of the questions that kept coming up. And I just felt like there was some tension, I had some internal tension going into vacation for some reason, trying to figure out what that was. Mm-hmm. And a part of it was, hey, the last two years have been hard. They've been hard for everybody, okay? And so... Um, they've been hard. And when you, you know, you, you pastor people, you love people and you, whether they realize it or not, you, you carry their burdens internally. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, that's just part of, part of the calling, which I I, mean, I don't complain about. I, I love that. All right. So I, that's, that's a, a real blessing, honestly. Um, but one of the things that kept coming up was, am I really all in with Jesus? That was what it just kept coming up over and over again. You know, life's been hard. Okay. It's great. Life is hard. And, uh, you know, you're tired, but hey, let's let's take out the, the job for a minute. Am I really all in with Jesus? And a passage kept coming to mind for me. And uh, it was it was a passage. It's, I think it's in three of the Gospels. OK, so it's an important passage. And it's a challenge. I think it's the most challenging words that Jesus said. And uh, he basically said, hey, if you want to be my disciple, you must and he used the word must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Mm-hmm. And uh, that just kept resonating with me over and over again. Like, oh, that that kind of sucks when you hear it. You know, like, okay, the deny yourself and all that stuff. <laughs> Couldn't and pick an easier passage there. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, it really was. And then he goes on, if you want to save your life. you lo-. he, he, So he goes on after that, not as a command, but hey, this is how life actually works, okay? Mm. So I really began to live in that for a while and going like, okay, what does that mean to deny yourself? It doesn't I deny your uniqueness, okay, of how God made you. But it does mean that you have to be willing to deny that part of us that the Bible calls the flesh that is constantly bending towards self-fulfillment. Mm-hmm. And we don't think about that that much because we so desire self-fulfillment and we think that that's going to provide us fulfillment. And then Jesus is saying, hey, listen, if you would deny that part of you because it's bending you not just towards self-fulfillment, but bending you away from me, and our bend is that. So that means we can follow Jesus, but it's a completely self-fulfillment journey. And what Jesus is saying is, actually, after a while, you're not even following me. You're following yourself because you've denied me along the line. It's a really brutal passage, but in the way, it's just very helpful. And I felt like as I looked into that, John, I felt like there were some things in my life where I'm going, I got to be honest with you. If I gotten into that habit where you kind of, we live in a culture of, we live in a great country, but our culture is pushing us away. And if I kind of settled into some things, but yet said, I'm really following Jesus, is my life looking that much different than what the average American's life looks like? Just because I got a pastor title, okay, that, what? but personally speaking, does it look different? And with the mess that's going on in our world right now, I, I was just very convicted. It needs to look different. Our world needs us to look different. Not weird, but seeing a vision of what God could do and could be in a person. And uh, because it is attractive and it is appealing, but the beginning part is, are you willing to deny that part of you that is constantly bending to self-fulfillment because you think you know how to fulfill your life? Jesus knows how to fulfill your life. And the only way that can happen is if you draw a line in the sand and say, I'm done with this, I'm all in. 
very challenging for me. I know that was a long answer, but it just, I'm still wrestling through some of it because it was just so challenging for me. No, I mean, that's, that's really good. I mean, it, it's good and bad, right? <laughs> it <laughs> is. It's like, oh man. Um, so, okay. So you're thinking through that. So much of what we talk about, right? Whether it's, I mean, podcasts talk about hopeful and helpful content. We, you know, a lot of the stuff we talk about, hey, here are all these things that will make your life better in some some regard. You know, if we believe yeah. following Jesus will make your life better. Um, but it's very clear that that might mean it looks different than you think it does, right? So how do mm-hmm. you how do you learn to navigate that? Hey, this thing is better, but doesn't necessarily mean that it's like you to use your word self fulfilling. Yeah, I I think <laughs> it's such a great question. I think when we first start out. Here's what happens. Okay, make a decision to follow Jesus. Actually, we're going to talk about this for six weeks in the uh, the Great Disconnect series. So it's going to be kind of fun. Hopefully, here's I'll be able to teaser. dump, dump it all out <laughs> properly. Yeah. Dump this all out <laughs> properly. But here, here's what happens. I think we first become a follower of Jesus, and uh, you know we're excited about it, taking the steps, and then we try just some basic stuff to put into practice of following Jesus, and we're like, oh man, that works. Okay, here's what I've seen. That works for a little while. And then we reach a point where that doesn't work anymore. Because what we end up happening is, is we still haven't denied ourselves. We've just been taking some basic steps. And this is a journey because so we all have to go through this. Okay. So when I say that, that that, that's not a negative. That's natural. We get to this point where all of a sudden that doesn't work anymore. It's like, okay, what's happened? This is following Jesus things. I'm making my life better. And it's not working. And the answer is no, it's not, it's not working. You've reached a point in your journey. And we've reached a point in our journey where it's not meant to work that way. It is, hey, this is, it's really Jesus's message in that. This is what makes it so unpopular, but so good. Jesus basically says, I want you to come and die and then follow me. And so that's not a popular message in culture today. It is do what's best for you and all that stuff, you know, your needs, your needs. And basically Jesus is saying that is an endless journey that'll never provide you what you're looking for. And so when we follow Jesus, that's when many people quit or stop. They get mm-hmm. to that point where this is not working. Why is this not working? Oh, it did work before. It must be something wrong with Jesus or something. And so I'm out. Mm-hmm. That's the point where you got to push through and go, wait a minute. I have yet to start following. God's just been gracious to me. And he's just showing me little by little. This is where I got to push through and really make some tough decisions up front. Knowing on the back end, Jesus says we will find life find life. And if you look at the rest of the passage, it's fascinating. You look at Mark 8. He even says this. He talks about our soul. He goes, hey, would you, would forfeit a soul, your soul for the whole world? The word soul actually is where we get our word psychology. It's actually called soology, literally. And uh, it's this idea of, oh, so in denying my self-fulfillment journey, because it's only going to be about self and that's not going to be enough, in denying my self-fulfillment journey, I'm giving that up for something larger so that God can actually provide me the life that I'm intended to. Yes. Mm. Yes. And that's where it starts to get interesting and good. But we have to be willing to go, God, I trust that you know better than me. And this sucks up front because this is what I'm used to. And this is what I'm told by culture I should do. But I trust that you know best. Mm. And that's, I mean, you hit on that's so much grander and bigger than just, oh, I want this, you know, I see for this for my life when God sees this for my life. Yeah. I think it's bigger than, well, I want to have, I want to be a better dad and stuff. So do I. Okay. I mean, I want all those things, Mm. but there's plenty of content out there that I can give you. Like I even said at the beginning, Hey, go seek advice from somebody. Okay. They can be a better dad, right? Just by doing that. (laughs) It doesn't mean that you're, it doesn't mean that you're a changed person. Mm. Okay. It just means that you're putting principles into practice. Mm. Someone that's a bad person let's just say it's got a bad heart, does bad things. They can put good principles into practice and get good results, Mm. but it doesn't change you. This is where Jesus is going, man, if you will do this, I will change everything about how you see the world and you will begin to see the world in such a way that it'll inspire you and motivate you to live the kind of life that you really want. That's what's Mm. so powerful about this. Do you think this like topic, these things that you've been thinking about, do you think that's kind of part of what you hope for the Ridge during this next season? 
I do. I, I hope, and hopefully I can, like I said, explain it better and all that stuff. I just, one of the things, the, the other thing I wrestle with is, do I still believe, and I, this was a, this was something I really wrestled with. Do I really still believe in God's vision for the local church? Mm. And you're like, Mark, you're wrestling with that. Yeah. I, I mean, you got to wrestle with that stuff. Okay. Because we see so much bad going on in the world. And, and if you want, you want to see the world change, you're like, okay, God, what, how do we do it? Is it still through the local church? And I still believe it is, but it's going to require people willing to have the courage to step up and go, I, I don't want the half-hearted commitment sort of thing because half-hearted commitment really gives low commitment, honestly, because mm -hmm. the world is going to win in that sort of thing. It, it, it just does. It beats all of us at the end. Culture, culture's influence changes because we're bombarded with it. The other one that, that Jesus was inspiring us to do and the one I'm wrestling with is it's, no, I win on this one in your life. And when I win, you win. I just want to see people do it because I think it's people that, a group of people that get that, that's when great stuff begins to happen because that's when God's going to move because now we're in a place where he can move us. And our world just needs that, man. I mean, we, we we see the world spinning out of control and it's easy to point fingers at stuff. I just go, who cares? Okay. When people detach from God, what do you think is going to happen? Okay. It's going to be a mess. And so we shouldn't be surprised at the mess, but we're always surprised at the mess. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just, I just go, Hey, listen, this is expected. It's a predictable result. And people go, Mark, is it going to get worse? Yeah. If people continue to detach from God. It's going to get worse. That's why they need, our, our world needs people that are willing to commit and reattach to God because that's the only thing that's going to stop the current. So I hope that's us. I do. And hopefully we'll be able to inspire people this fall and uh, God will really move hearts. And uh, we're going to raise the bar on that as far as that's concerned, but doing that for in a good way. Hmm. Mark, I, I don't know if I can succinctly summarize all that because that's so good. <laughs> um, that's fine. I'm still trying to summarize it. So that's good. No, I think I'm not. I mean, it's just, it's just a powerful thought, right? It's the, it's the captivating. It's really that, you know, I just come back to our, our vision, which is just to bring the hope of Jesus into every home. And the hope of Jesus is bigger than I'm going to be better at this thing. I'm going to be better at that thing. You know, it's really embodying you know, who Jesus is and, and helping that be a part of someone's story. Um, and what a cooler way to do it than on a journey. So, well, John, and, and think about this, I don't mean to interrupt you, but think about this in, in people's eyes back then, Jesus did not look like he was living a better life. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's the interesting thing, but that's how upside down and crazy it is. All right. Yeah. I mean, he looked like he was when he, people were watching him heal people and all that stuff. And they were sitting and listening to some of his messages that they liked, you know, part and you know, hey, this is great and all that stuff. And okay. Yeah. But then when they saw him give this sort of message that I just gave that passage, when they saw him, you know, praying in the garden and bleeding because he knew what was coming, even though he didn't want it to come, but he was willing to do it anyways. When he went to the cross, they weren't going like, man, Jesus is living a better life. You know, I want to follow him. They weren't, but he had to die before he rose. And that's the rhythm and the pattern that Jesus is pretty much laying out for us. We got to die to that stuff before we can experience the resurrection side of things that he wants us to experience. And so we got to be very careful about going like, it's going to look better. Not necessarily, mm -hmm. not necessarily, but it will be better. You know, it's interesting. Uh, that makes me think, have you heard of the the Jefferson Bible before? I have. Yeah, or Thomas Jefferson, like essentially he edits the parts out he doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's don't I don't read know, that Bible, of, by the way. Just right, for the record. Yeah. Don't we don't recommend that Bible. <laughs> we do not recommend that. No. We do um, not recommend it. Well, I think that's and that's but that's what we do, right? We just don't go to the task. We take the parts out. We're like, it's so easy for us to take out the parts that we like and say, Oh, that's not for me right now, or I don't know about that, or maybe it's like, well, no, you know what I heard someone say about that, John. I thought this was convicting. I heard someone say this. They say, when we do that, here's what we're doing. We're crafting a God in our image. And guess what will happen after a while? You won't follow that God because he's too small, because we're too small. Wow. That's what, and, but we're, that's our, our tendency. But yeah. That's what we're doing. We want a God in our own image and God will not be made in our image. 
You know, I know you use the uh, you use the headset, but if you used a handheld, that would be your mic drop moment right there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the hand- uh, handheld! Oh, <laughs> I can never get used to that thing for some reason. We call it the Britney Spears. Uh, Britney Spears mic, actually, when I put it on, that's what we call it, the Britney Spears mic. <laughs> well, we'll get you one with the, the giant, we'll get you a, a giant, uh, the giant cover on the top of it. So it's fully Britney Spears. That's you. right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing the, what was going through your mind on vacation as you spend that time reflecting and stuff with parenting. And this is really good stuff, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm so proud to be here. Like I said, love our church. I just, I'm expecting just God to move and just, I'm really excited about what's ahead. I really am. I, I just really excited about it. So thanks again for having me. Well, that was my conversation with Mark. And like I said, there's a lot to unpack from that conversation. I think from the parenting side of things, taking a humble approach and seeking wisdom is really valuable and helpful. And then I would encourage anyone to take some time this week and slow down and really try to do some reflection. Pull out some paper and a pen and just write down what those honest self-reflection questions lead you to think about. And of course, Mark's gonna unpack a lot of what he's talking about at the end of our conversation in our next series, The Great Disconnect, which just started on Monday as of the release of this episode. So make sure to catch it over on YouTube if you haven't done so already. Well, thanks for listening to this episode of The Ridge Podcast. And make sure to subscribe and follow so that you don't miss any hopeful and helpful conversations.